In this video we'll cover just a few of the line editing tools which are found in the edit suite of icons. It should be noted that we customize our palette for clarity in this tutorial. We have break, trim, join, fillet and insert point. These are used on 2D and 3D lines only not on solid or surface objects. Let's begin by drawing a 2D shape. We'll go to the draw suite of icons and we'll select the vector line drawing tool. In the tool options palette select the 2D surface icon so we can draw it as a 2D shape. Click a few points for the vector line. Then let's switch to the arc tool and continue on with an arc. And from there we shall uh, use a spline curve drawing tool and put a nice little curve on there and then we double click to end. And there's our 2D shape. In this tutorial we'll turn off the show grid and show axis by clicking on the show grid and show axis icons in the display tools palette. The first line editing tool we'll look at is the break tool. To simply click anywhere on your line and it'll break it at that location and separate that into two separate lines. We can see the result if we were to move one of the lines away from the other. We can also use the trim tool which allows us to take any two lines and trim those to a common point. It still remains two separate lines. If we would like to join those together then we can use the join tool. Click on the two different lines and they join together to form one single line. What if I try to join two lines together and their ends are not touching? For example with these two vector lines I'll zoom in really close and you can see that there's a gap there. Well the join tool does have one option. If you look in the tool options palette you see that there's a tolerance setting. If I try to join these two lines as long as that gap is within the tolerance that I have set it'll actually still join those lines together. To make the points of your line visible open the display options palette then turn on the show points option and the points of your line are now visible. Now let's look at the fillet tool. Click on the object and the fillet is applied to all points on the object. Undo. Hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and select just a segment. And the fillet is applied to just the endpoints of that segment. Let's undo that operation and hold down the command key again and click on just a point. Now the fillet is applied to just that one point. Just like all the other tools in Bonsai 3D, it's highlighted orange so we can modify any of the parameters after that tool is executed. And last we'll look at the insert point icon. This allows us to insert points into our line. For example click on your vector line and we can add a point right there. We can insert a point into our arc and insert a point into our spline curve. To see the results of this we can use the move tool and hold the command key on Mac or control on Windows and move that point. We can move the point in the arc and move the point that was inserted into our spline. Let's conclude this tutorial with a sample project. We'll recreate this chair by sketching the shape as 2D and 3D lines first. Then we'll reshape those lines into three dimensional solid objects. Let's begin by sketching the frame of the chair first. Select the vector line drawing tool. Select the 2D surface icon. And we'll turn grid snap on. We'll click. To begin drawing our vector line, snap along the green guideline, click, and to move vertical we'll press and release the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows. Click, let's move back along the green snap line, click, and I'll press and release the command key again to go vertical again. Double click, and there's half of our chair frame. We'll make a copy of this line for the other side of the chair. Use the move tool. Set the copy icon, then click and drag. And there's our copy of the line. We'll close the shape by adding two more vector lines. Select the vector line tool and notice that we get a plus icon, meaning we're actually adding that to the existing line that's already there. And I click there to add a vector line across the top. Hit the escape key to make the controls disappear. Let's draw a second vector line. I add it to the end there. And as the cursor moves across the other part of the line, the knot symbol represents this will end up being a single closed shape. Let's reshape the top of the frame by using the insert point tool and inserting a point in the middle of the top segment. Then using the move tool, I'll hold the command key down and select that point and move it where we want. 
Press and release the command key to toggle the perpendicular direction. In order to smooth out some of the sharp corner points on our line, we'll use the fillet tool. Click on the object, and a fillet is added to each point on the vector line. We'll convert our line into a 3D object by sweeping a shape along that line. In this example, we'll use a circle, and we'll draw a 2D circle and give it the radius that we want. And then we'll move to the axial sweep tool, select our shape, select the line that it's going to follow, and there's our chair. The sweep tool does have an option to control whether the object that's generated is a series of planar facets or perfectly smooth. Let's choose the smooth option. And there's our frame for our chair. Now let's create the seat cushion. We'll start by drawing a 2D rectangle. And to round the corners, we'll use the fillet tool. Click on the object. And there's a fillet added to all the corner points. Let's move that into the position where we want it. And then to convert that 2D shape into a 3D object, we use the reshape tool and just reshape it into a three-dimensional solid object. To sort of round the cushion on the top and bottom, we can use the rounding tool. And of course, the tool options has the values for the rounding radius. And so we'll round the top face and the bottom face to give us a softer cushion. The last object to create is the backrest. Before we start sketching that out, let's move to a front view. I'm not sure what type of shape I want for the back of the chair yet, so I'll just start sketching multiple lines. Maybe choose a vector line tool, draw a line across the bottom, and another line along the side over here. Switch over to the spline tool, a nice curve on that part of the chair. And I want to take these two lines and I want to maintain symmetry, so I'm going to mirror them over to the other side. So select the mirror tool, make sure you have the copy option selected, hold down the shift key to select both of those lines. Then when I'm ready to mirror, just simply click two points and they will mirror across that line. I'll now use the trim tool and start trimming these lines to create the boundary of the shape that I want. Be sure to pick on the side that you want to keep. So if I click on this side and that side of the object, it keeps the side that you click on. Now these are all separate lines at this point. I can join those together by using the Area Pick tool, grab all those lines or pick them one by one. And then using the Join tool, I can click a blank area and all those lines are joined into one continuous shape. Some sharp corner points there, so let's go to our Fillet tool. I hold down the Command key so I can add a rounding to just that point that point, and maybe the corner point down here, and the one point down there. And there's the shape for the backrest of our chair. Once again, to convert the 2D shape into a 3D object, we can use the reshape tool. Click on your 2D shape, and you can reshape it into a three-dimensional object. In order to round the edges, we'll do the same thing we did with the bottom cushion. We'll use the rounding tool. We'll round the top face and the back face to give it a nice soft backrest. And there's our chair that was originally derived or sketched using 2D and 3D lines and then converted into a three-dimensional object. And this concludes the line editing tutorial.